Welcome to the Midnight Breakcast, episode number 99. I am one of your hosts, Intern Josh. Uh, hanging out with me today, as always, is the Doctor of Filmonomics, Greg the Movie Guy. hey We've got the Scream Queen herself, Maddie. All you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> and the Doctor of Everything Else, Patrick. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're just going to dive right into this shit. Um, we watched a movie. We watched a trailer. We got a topic. Everybody just sit back, hang out, just listen to the shit. Here we go. We're starting with our trailer today, which is a trailer I'm really excited for. Movie I'm looking forward to. Just dropped on Shutter two days ago, Friday. I think. Yep, Something Friday. Like that, Maddie. Um, we're watching the trailer for a film called Stop Motion. And because I like to pick on him, I am going to pick on Greg. Hit me with what you got. See, I, I ask you to answer it for the first time on me once, and now you're going to pick on me? That's mean. I feel like I pick on you every single time we do this. Yeah, you kind of do. That's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> um, I, I'm actually really super excited for this film. Um, not just because it looks like an interesting story, but it looks like there's going to be some animation graphics. Obviously, it's stop motion type animation graphics that's going to make this film just sing. Um, I stumbled on this about a month ago when I was looking for horror movies that had been released that I could start to watch. And I've been super excited to check this out, and the trailer made me feel no different. So uh, definitely checking this one out. Cool, Maddie. Um, so I cheated a little bit. I actually already have seen this movie. Um, oh, yeah. but, but I was really looking forward to it because I just like, I like that little something different um, in movies, and I haven't really seen... Maybe I have, and I'm just blanking it out. No, I have. I when I'm there, this movie, this trailer reminded me of something. Um, there's a Czech movie, and it's Alice in Wonderland, but it's all done in stop motion, and it's so cool, and it looks so creepy, and so that's kind of what drew me into seeing this movie. Um, and I saw the trailer a little while ago, and have kind of been waiting for it to come out, so. Yeah, it just looked different. It looked something new. Maddie, have you seen the uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio on Netflix at all? No. Um, I don't think I have Netflix mm. anymore after ah. I've spoken so highly of them. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it is one that I do want to see. I really like del Toro's work. Oh, yeah. Um, it's It's stop motion, and it is absolutely stunning. Ooh, okay. I'll check that one out. Thank you. Yes. Cool. Patrick? Watching this one uh, intrigues me. It seems to be a new concept, a new idea, possibly, because I never saw any of the Puppet Master movies or anything like that, so I can't really mm -hmm. compare toy-to-toy -to -toy type movies. Um, but I, I love the parallel with the filmmaking and the storytelling and everything else. So to me, this just seems like it's something new to me uh, with, uh, you know, we're swimming in a world of rehashed ideas and reboots and remakes. And I am intrigued to follow this one um, uh, to, or, or to watch this one uh, just because it appears to be a new idea. Right. Yeah. Stop motion. Um, I've had saved on my list for a while now. Um, and, uh, I've been waiting to kind of pull the, uh, the trigger on it. And then Maddie had like made a comment Thursday or Friday about how stop motion was about to drop. And I, I was at work and I threw everything against the wall and started looking for that movie, um, <laughs> on shutter. And then, it was like coming out the next day. Um, and I, I'm glad I have not, um, haven't watched it yet because I, I do want to add it to our, our list of films to watch for the, the podcast. Um, but again, this is what I'm talking about when we were talking about trends and movies that we're looking forward to coming out this year. This is exactly what I, I the kind of stuff that I want to chase and that I want to see. Like everybody said, it's so different. And, um, 
and visually it's just really really great to look at and conceptually it's just it's just really interesting and um i'm very much looking forward to uh to checking out the the film all, overall and uh and chatting about it with you guys um uh even though maddie cheated but no big deal no big deal it's it's fine so no big be, maddie because you have seen it is it worth a watch you know it's worth watching because i think it brings a lot of things up and i think we can get some really good discussion about it excellent cool so yeah that is definitely going to be be on our list uh we had you know we had talked about covering more covering more trailers because we we do cover trailers every time we do an episode but then we never cover the movie and maddie kind of pointed that out so um we're covering this trailer now now it's on our list at some point we will get to it so i think it's it's easier now because as we were talking about last time there's a shorter lead time between the trailer dropping and the movie coming out so it's like easier for us to remember like I remember the movie Antlers. That trailer dropped like over a year before this damn thing actually came out. And by the right. time it did come out, I was like, I can't even remember what this friggin' movie is about. And to this day, I still haven't watched it. We covered Antlers for the podcast, I swear. Am I crazy? No, we did. You are crazy? losing it. No, no we, did. we did. We did. We covered that one for sure, right? I, I'm going to have to go back and look. Because look, I, if I'm crazy, that's cool. I can accept that. But... This is one. This is one. I, I swear, I, I'm a, I'm ninety eight point two percent. I'm right about this one. So okay, well, I'll give you this. Um, I think towards the end of one of the years, I wasn't super active because I was just really busy with school. So you guys might have seen it, and I, I didn't. That's fair. You should. It was it was okay. Um, and it's it's also <laughs> Del, Del Toro. It's also Del Toro, which you like. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a, a shot. Cool. Um, so is that a yay, nay? Everybody was ready, excited to watch stop motion. Oh, absolutely! Maddie? I'm yeah, I'm yeah, jumping hard on board a, for this. Yeah, it definitely it's, should be a podcast. I'm just gonna spend the next hour giving Maddie shit. Um, no, I won't. Um, <laughs> um, cool. Uh, well, we got a uh, topic to talk about. Also, real quick before we jump into um, our uh, our feature film. And uh, I'm just because we just talked about it about two minutes ago, and I've already forgotten. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the basis for this topic stemmed from a real live incident a little over a month ago. Our little town up here uh, west of Omaha, Elkhorn, was rattled by an F3 tornado, and it was one of the most least the most least the least pleasant experiences of my life. And it got me thinking, why aren't natural disaster movies considered horror movies? Because going through that was like, I, I would sit through Megalomaniac Martyrs, a Serbian film, and I'd have Matt, Maddie pick out another 10 marathon of those types of films rather than watch a gigantic funnel tear through my town again. And... It's it's just one of those things that just pops up and we're low on topics. So why aren't horror mo- or why aren't natural disaster films considered horror movies? Go. I I actually thought a lot about this because I was trying to think because I couldn't come up with a good reason besides they just aren't. I used to live in Oklahoma and so I have been through an F three and an F five tornado and yeah it's it's the like the scariest fucking thing. Um, I think the scale is something it's like, you rarely see horror movies that are large scale. Mm -hmm. Um, it's mostly concentrated on like a smaller group of people. Um, it's normally very quick natural disaster, especially tornadoes, hurricanes, that kind of thing. They, I mean, they leave a really lasting impact, but they kind of go through quick. So the suspense is hard to build up. 
Um, horror movies also, we've said this before, kind of depend on stupid people to like drive the plot forward. While natural disasters can kind of happen <laughs> to anybody, except uh, for Texas, you're getting exactly what you deserve down there. <laughs> and I will stand by that. Maddie, um, I, you you know, here in Nebraska, when the sirens go off, we go outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we go out to the driveway. And wait till the very last second to head to the basement. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't want to be that stupid person. But yeah, that's all true. <laughs> well, even in Oklahoma and like uh-uh. the two that I was down in Oklahoma, like people died. Like we were really lucky in the Alcorn tornado that nobody died. But uh, the F5 I was in, I think 20 something people died. Oof. And then the F3, we had, I think, four, four people died. That sounds about right. Yeah. So people are dying, but I will say, and I don't know if this counts as a natural disaster movie. Did anybody watch uh, the the docu drama series um, on HBO Max at Chernobyl? No, I wanted to. Oh my god, that is a horror movie. I have never felt such anxiety and tension watching anything in my entire life. Interesting. That was that was awful. So like that was a horror movie. I don't know if a nuclear meltdown is a quote unquote natural disaster, but that was horror. I mean <laughs> maybe not natural, horror. but uh <laughs> that's a disaster movie. Yeah. But yeah, yeah you, something. Yeah, you look at you look at those kinds of movies like Night of the Twisters, I would consider more of a horror movie, but I don't think it landed in that genre or um, I know it was a god awful movie, but there was a movie back in the early '90s called Volcano. Um, yeah, or uh, no, not vol- not Volcano. I'm sorry, uh, Dante's Peak is what it was called, and that was I consider a horror movie at this at this rate. But no, they listed it under like action adventure, whatever it was, and it's like <laughs> this is one of the most horrific things you are ever going to legitimately experience, and you want to label it as action adventure. I don't think so. Right. And you know, I, I was looking up, I, I typed in the old Google machine, natural <laughs> disaster horror films. And what came up was the day after tomorrow, mm-hmm. deep impact, Armageddon, San Andreas, Twister, um, films like that, that are stuck and shoved into a, a, uh, the action adventure genre and what they all kind of have in common from what, oh, and Titanic's on there also. It's not quite a natural disaster, but yeah. okay. Yeah. It is a group of people out to save the day. You know what I mean? Which is not, which is not a, uh, you know, a, uh, a piece of, horror films kind of like maddie said it's kind of like just a bunch of stupid people running around trying not to get killed there's a hero at the end of all these these movies from again what i remember of them and i think that's why they're shoved into that that action adventure genre versus horror is just because of that 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 there's happy endings at the end of all those movies if i remember right you know there's always somebody there saving the day and um, you know, like you kind of lived through Greg, that's not that's not how that goes, right? Um, but in those right. movies that's how it goes. And so shoving that into a horror element, how do you how do you do that? That was a question. Um the knife I tornado. Think the only yeah, I think the only way you can do that is by uh throwing some sort of creature into it as well, like Sharknado or that's it, yep. uh, arachnado or you know things like that um because i i I think generally horror goes to the point where it's something that couldn't wouldn't normally commonly happen and unfortunately these natural disasters do commonly happen right um so that maybe that's one of the differentiations is you know when you throw natural in of it natural disaster horror or whatever well it's it, yeah it, it, nobody wants to live through it but it doesn't take you out of the element of let's say a friday the 13th or or halloween 
Sure. So I didn't think Arachnado was a real movie, and I looked it up, and it is. That's insane. <laughs> I love that for us. So the only way that you can put a, a horrific or a, a horror title on that is to basically put a face on your on your antagonist, a shark or a spider or whatever that yeah, might happen some, to be. Something that gives it, you know, a a living element <clears throat> to it. I know that they tried to do that with with um the original Twister when Helen Hunt's character was, you know, all of her life. It's like, no, that one hunted me down. It's like, what? Um, but, you know, uh, it, it just doesn't have a mind of its own. So Yeah, there's, I think with horror, like, the whatever is pursuing, like, the characters has malice to it. There's not really any mm -hmm. malice with a flood or a tornado or a hurricane. It's just, it's something that's happening. Yeah, Greg. Greg stepped away. So sorry, guys. Um, he had to step away for a second. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know how to really, you know, answer. I guess the question more than you know what we've kind of covered. Um, you know, Patrick. I guess really answered it the best is that you got to shove a fucking shark or a spider into the tornado to make it a horror film, which is, which is awful. But again, you know, Greg's not wrong on this front and on this topic all those things are horrific elements of of life they just you know they shove a superhero in the in those movies and call them action adventure and everybody lives and everybody it's a happy ending and that's just how those movies go and um you know you can't have that in a horror movie i guess so yeah, yeah. like yeah as i said it they're scary. Like I said, I've been in a tornado before too, and it, it sucks, but like, I don't know, I guess there's more opportunities to be a hero. You know what I mean? Cause like, that's the thing that like news and everything focuses on is like the aftermath, like, Oh, look at all these people that came together to like help like build the community back up. Like, and ho like when you have serial killers, like nobody after Ted Bundy was like, Oh, look at all look at all the people that came out to help afterwards. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So But yeah, again, everybody should check out Chernobyl because that was that was a thing. But yeah, you said I, that was a do documentary on Netflix or on, on HBO? No, it well, kind of. It was like a dramatization of okay. um of the Chernobyl series, but yeah, it's, it's fucking, it's grim. Like, holy shit. Like we normally are binge watchers. I could not binge watch that at no, all. Okay. I was like, I have emotions. I need to process. We can watch more of this next week. We're going to dive into our feature film for the, the uh, evening. Um, we're watching lovely dark and deep, which is a trailer that we did cover. Um, and I, I can't remember everybody's thoughts and opinions on, on the trailer. Um, but it was a trailer that we covered a few episodes back, uh, and we watched it. So, uh, while we're waiting for Greg, Patrick Dietz. Yeah, the Dietz on, they're not long, so, uh, maybe I'll just talk slow. Okay. Um, <laughs> Lovely Dark and Deep, uh, is a 2023 release that we, uh, got to see for free on Tubi. Um, Lennon, a new backcountry ranger, travels alone through the dangerous wilderness, hoping to uncover the origins of a tragedy that has haunted her since she was a child. Uh, IMDb rating, uh, 4.8 out of 10. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes score, 89% critics choice, uh, but only a 38% audience score. So critics liked it, audience not so much. What is with that lately? I feel like there's been a huge like like variation between what critics and I know that's kind of normal, but I just feel like lately a lot of the horror movies we've been seeing like the critic score is like super high and then like the audience is like what are you well, talking uh, about? Yeah, cuz I think unfortunately what we're seeing is a critic score that um 
you know, maybe five people rated it when it's a critic score. Mm. Let, me check. let me check uh, when it says the critic score, how many people, 38 reviews uh, for the critic score. And then for uh, the audience score is 50 plus ratings. So oh, I mean, okay. can you really base it on, you know, like if a thousand people reviewed it or anything like that? So, so yeah, it's hard to say when, when there's that much disparity between the two. Yeah, but that makes that makes a lot of sense. Like, I don't know why when I think like critic score, I'm thinking like a ton of people, even though like it's obviously a much smaller like mm -hmm. the general audience. But I don't know for some reason I just was like, you know, this has been really varied lately, and I just think it's a little weird. Yeah, yeah. no, I it's completely good. agree. Yeah. Uh, well, cool. Uh, you know, since you kind of gave deets, Patrick, you want to start and just chat really quick. Uh, sure. I could go ahead and start. Um, lovely, dark, and deep. First of all, this is the same actress that was in Barbarian, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was. Okay. Um, <laughs> and yes, uh, I, 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 I gotta say, I like her performance in Barbarian better than this. She tended to play her character a little flat. This was a tough watch for me, and I'm not sure why it was my, it was the first one I watched this morning, um, and it, it was a slow burn. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little tired of slow burns. I'm, I'm getting to that point where I'm a little bit more like Maddie, and I'm thinking if action and shit is not happening within the first half hour, I'm losing interest. Um... So these slow burns are, are, are hard to, for me to sit through lately, you know? So when I hear that Midsummer is coming out with their fucking director's cut of it, yeah. I'm just thinking, why? I, I felt that this kind of got bogged down into some of the psycho babble that I understood what was going on, and yet I didn't understand what was going on. I felt that mm -hmm. there were times where they threw things in just to make it strange. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do feel there's a good movie in there somewhere, but I don't think it ever clawed its way to the surface for me. 100%. So, yeah, so yeah it was interesting. It was eerie. It never scared me. And like I said, it just never, what what was behind all of it just never made its way to the surface. Yeah, never came to fruition. Yeah, there's no, yeah. yeah. Um, Greg's back. Let's pick on Greg for a second. Okay. Hi. Sorry, I had to step away. Um, You know, I, I know we had talked about this movie or we would watch the trailer and really kind of pick this movie apart. And I, I didn't go in with high hopes, but... I'm not upset having watched it. Uh, I thought it was really beautifully shot how it was done. Um, the location was gorgeous. The story was a little lacking, kind of like what you were saying, Patrick. There was there was a story in there, but it never really just it never really happened. And mm -hmm. when you even when you got to the end, you're still kind of questioning what was going on. I yeah, I never I never felt any any sense of fear at all. Um, I thought the, the more intense scenes were done fairly well. And the, uh, Oh, I gotta think about it. the, uh, the scene where she goes into the, the weird house situation. And I won't go any further than that was done fairly well to try and bring up the suspense and all that. But overall it was, it was a decent movie. Not, not one I'll probably revisit, but it was a decent film. Cool, Patrick. If I cut you off, I apologize. Did you have no? More? No, you did not. Okay, uh, Maddie. All right. I actually, as I said in the thing, I took notes. I didn't just come on here and word vomit for this movie. <laughs> I am I'm trying. I am so proud. Trying of you. to. I know. I'm just. I'm trying to grow as a podcaster and a person. <laughs> uh, I didn't even say that with a straight face. So anyway, uh, I actually was. 
kind of pumped about this movie because I hike solo a lot and I also was a park ranger on a back county park ranger. But um, so I thought this movie would be something that really resonated with me. I had made a comment when we um, were doing the trailer that I was like, this this girly is way too young to be a back county park ranger. And I looked her up. She is my age. So she's not as young as I thought in the trailer. For some reason, she was kind of reading in her twenties. And I was like, that's not right. But she's in her thirties and her, her and her character carried themselves like someone in their thirties. So I was like, okay, a little bit more believable. Um, they did have a very accurate showing of kind of like, ranger life um just from a lot of like documentaries and stuff that i've watched so kudos for them it does look like they've done they did like their research a little bit which is nice um i do agree with patrick i didn't see barbarian but her acting in this movie was kind of not my favorite and i don't know if it was the character or her acting that was just kind of Eh, because on one hand, I thought it was kind of a nice change of pace for making a female character that wasn't friendly and outgoing and talkative. I feel like that's kind of like a default for female characters to be in. And not all of us are friendly, bubbly, happy people. So having somebody that was kind of more withdrawn and not very talkative was kind of (laughs) just a nice change of pace. But it also didn't make her very sympathetic and it didn't make her a very interesting character to watch when you have a movie that's focused on one person and one character i feel like they have to be a strong character and then this just really wasn't i thought this was kind of predictable all the scares and kind of inconveniences were just things that i have seen over and over and over and over again um I did find it kind of hard to believe that somebody that had a major trauma history was even hired in that park. (laughs) I was going to have that question for you, Maddie, if they have to go through some sort of evaluation to do this job. Um, Most back County park rangers are police officers, like they're federal law enforcement agents. And so they go through Academy. So I would assume that psychological evaluation is a hundred percent part of it because it's just saw these rangers they carry guns they're out by themselves for long periods of time they're put in stressful situations so i was kind of like would you really hire somebody with this kind of like trauma history in that park this was very much based on um missing 411 which is a documentary and kind of like a series because a lot of people do disappear at national parks this is just kind of been a phenomenon this was kind of like almost a movie to almost explain what was going on but it didn't explain it at one point i thought it was going to be aliens and it didn't turn out to be aliens so i i don't know what i thought about this movie i was very mid it was trying but it just didn't get there for me as you guys said there was a story in there that was trying to come out and it just never came out. Um, if this is something you enjoyed or something you would have enjoyed, I do recommend Missing 411, like the documentary series. Um, much more interesting and real. You know what I mean? God, Maddie took all yeah. those notes, and now I, I fucking wish I didn't have to follow her. That sucks. Um, <laughs> that was really good, Maddie. Uh, good notes. They were all good. Um I, 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 you've left me nothing. Um, I'm sorry. No, it's all good. Uh, everybody kind of hit on all the points, but I'll, I will repunch some of the points. Uh, you know, Patrick said, it's a really slow burn movie. It's a really slow start. You gotta, you gotta, um, 100%, uh, give this time to breathe before any moment really hits at all. Um, you know, Maddie, Maddie said it too. Like, it's really hard spending 85 percent of this film by yourself no dialogue and no one to talk to and and then you know we're talking about how you know the lead actress was not you know as great as she was in barbarian i mean i thought the scenes that she was in uh where she had interaction with the the lead that guy um the guy our park ranger 
I thought all those scenes where they had the the lunch and um, the the conversation about the missing girl. I thought those scenes where they gave her something um, and somebody to interact with. I thought were all all good. Um, otherwise, though, she spent the most the majority of the movie by herself, marking maps and you know having to find little things to do to make it semi interesting. Um, I felt that they like they, they missed a lot of opportunities uh, for spots that they could have had scares in, um, even like some sort of like jump scare, which I hate those with a passion. But I would have taken one of those over really what was nothing. Um, they uh, they they spent a lot of time or a good chunk of time on her family trauma and what happened with her sister and her family and everything, those little pieces came throughout the movie, but that never, that never paid off. And, um, spending that much time for no answer really was kind of like, I don't know why they, they threw that. There's no need to throw that piece in there, to be honest with you, if they weren't gonna wrap it up. And I don't feel like they ever wrapped it up. Um, a lot of the idea of when I threw this trailer out to you guys was the trailer reminded me a lot of a film we watched called Last Shift. And I was like, oh, mm. this is like this is last gonna be like last shift, but in you know in the forest. Four, in the forest, right. Yeah. And uh, I was like and, and tonally like that that had a great tone to it and that I mean that jumped right in. And while again it's a, it's a girl by herself in a police office, by, you know, like the whole movie, they visually made that movie interesting, and they found spots in that movie to put little jump scares in, and they missed the mark all the way around on Lovely Dark and Deep, and it was just a bummer to see them not take um, advantage of what could have been. Um, a really creepy, even if it was a slow burn, a really creepy slow burn movie. Um, mm-hmm. They lost it for me, so yeah. I was kind of um, kind of bummed. I didn't. I, they did they did I miss? Did they ever kind of explain like or give you an idea of why the forest? Like I understand the whole like you saved somebody, so you have to give. Now you have to give a body. Like I get that, but I never got like why. Um. Uh, why the forest is taking you, and why these people that seemingly seem to know about what's going on in this forest, why they're letting people out there just roam around by themselves? Um, <laughs> right? Am I? I mean, it, it, I could have missed something, but um, but yeah, um, that's kind of what where I'm at on the film. Uh, like you all said, it, it, it was it was pretty mid to me so okay so yeah. it was her sister for some reason i thought it was her daughter it was like i yeah. okay okay i for some reason i totally missed that on i thought it was her daughter or something but yeah now that you kind of mentioned like her whole like family thing and her going back there like they literally just made up that storyline so there was another little like ghost person to follow her around like after she like yeah. Started losing it. Yeah, so I don't know. Um Yeah, that's I all guess, I really have on that film. So at like and we talked last time about like twenty twenty four trends and like I feel like every movie I've watched has had good ideas, but they're just not like putting the pedal to the metal. And we mm-hmm. I feel like this is that's that movie that is this movie in a nutshell. And I'm just like, what's what's kind of going on where you are getting these good ideas and but you're just not like pumping things up because this could have been, a, as you said, a really creepy movie and it just wasn't. And it's like, do you guys not have the funding? Do you want to make sure you get your money back so you're trying not to isolate your audience? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, it's like uh, they they just uh, kind of get to that. uh that spot where they're going to pull the trigger on some things and they just don't, don't do it. And I don't know if it it could be also like, you know, uh, just the fear of trying something, 
You know what I mean? Fear of failing, I guess, is what it, you know. Right. A, a lot of it could be is like, if I do this, should I do this and, you know, see what happens? Or do I, do I play it safe and give people something, you know, kind of familiar so I don't, you know, alienate my audience? So, and a lot of those people, again, like this, they just, they sh- if she if they would have pushed, I would have been interested to see what would have happened. So. Yeah, like it it just gives very like first year art students honestly. And I'm actually looking up the director right now and Yeah, she's only made like a couple movies. So Yep, she's only made a couple movies and like most of them were shorts. This yeah. is her first kind of like solo. Mm big adventure with that though though, this is her base this is her base and i would be curious to see where she would go i say that's a good spot to jump off on yeah yeah from here so yeah i would definitely be interested to see where she goes yeah absolutely no i i think if this is where we're kind of landing at then yeah you do have a good base i think she's got a good career started just like don't be afraid to, you know, go, go push. Like we've said it before. Horror is one of those, like not for everybody genres. So it's okay to make the movie not for everybody. Right. (laughs) You know, it's okay to have a niche audience. It's the best genre to like, you know, kind of fuck around in, you know what I mean? Like you can do, you look, you make your own rules essentially when you write these movies and you make them. You can do anything you want to. I, I, I guess if it's not, I guess if it's your money you're playing with, uh, to be fair. Um, <laughs> but you know, these are the the perfect kind of movies to to try things and uh, and see where they land. You you can't do that in really any other genre. So this is the kind of the one to to push in. Yeah, exactly. Although it would be interesting to see if she, like... Because I feel like a lot of director and a lot of actors, like, first movies are horror movies because it's kind of the genre to fuck around in. (laughs) And so I'll be interested to see if she continues making horror movies or if she moves off and does something else. Anything else across the board for Lovely, Dark, and Deep? Any other thoughts? No, nothing on nothing on me. I, I do want to ask you, Greg, yeah. um, because I, I do know you are a fan of of Last Shift. <clears throat> kind of where this sat for you, um, with, with you know, I, not I'm not going to say comparatively because it's not a fair comparison. No. Um, <laughs> um, but like, did it did it give you those vibes at all, or like knowing? So Last Shift is a film I feel like you push all the time. We, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a film that we definitely chat about. And when we saw the trailer, like I said, it reminded me a lot of that. Did you, um, did you see any of it in this film? Not, not at all. Uh, honestly, I had kind of forgotten that we had talked about it had the last shift vibes when we watched the trailer. So um, I went into this completely fresh, not even thinking about it, except that we had uh, watched the trailer and talked about it on the podcast and knowing we didn't really feel like it was going to sit well as a movie. Okay. Um, I, I kind of went in blank slate as best as I could, but no, I, I never experienced last shift vibes. Um, I was, I was hoping to get, Oh, there was a movie that came up while I was watching it and I'm trying to remember what it was. I want to say it was the forest. Oh yeah. 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 Um, the, I can't remember her name. Natalie, Natalie Dormer. Something. Yeah. It was in that. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, a little bit, but not, not much. I mean, yeah, it, yeah, there, there are, there was potential, but they, they dropped the ball on a few of those sections as we had kind of talked about. So cool. <clears throat> cool. Well, let's, uh, yeah. let's get that. Oh, go ahead, Patrick. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, I'm a huge last shift fan and, when I saw the trailer, yeah, I, it was easy to draw a comparison there. 
Mm-hmm. But then upon viewing the film, there's nothing. No. Yeah. To compare it to, sure. I don't think. Yeah. Other than it was a single female woman dealing with um, supernatural. Mm-hmm. That, that's right. the only comparison. Right. Cool. Let's uh let's rate it across the board, and uh, I'll just go in the order that I'm looking at people. Maddie, give me a number. On, I don't want to rate it this low, but there was just nothing super special in this mm-hmm. movie, um, and I wouldn't really revisit it. I, I'm gonna have to give it a five. Like it just kind of sat oh. super mid to me and like the second I finished watching it I didn't remember a thing about it yeah, that that's totally fucking fair uh, Patrick <laughs> yeah I'm giving it uh, you know we just finished the other podcast and I'm comparing apples to oranges here but still right. um, I'm going to have to put it even lower than the five probably about a four four point five. okay it just, it just really, like I said, it really didn't do much for me. Sure. Not that it wouldn't for other people, but for me personally, it it just took too long to develop into nothing. Right, Greg. I I think you're you're really astute in both those or in that uh, in that assessment, Patrick. I I've been kind of hovering around that five four area, but I'm going to give it a four. And just exactly as you had mentioned, you can't compare Megalomaniac with lovely dark and deep because they are two wildly different movies. But when you look at them as a genre type film, there is no question that megalomaniac is a horror film. This one you could throw into a thriller category Mm -hmm. and I think you'd be safe. Mm -hmm. Um, And there, there wasn't much more to push it into that horror genre. So I'm, I'm going to sit on a four with it. Cool. Yeah. Um, Like we kind of all said, like if you dig on a slow burn, kind of horror film again i'd call it horror because of some of the elements that were in that film just me uh but uh if you are a fan of the slow burn then i would and it's on tubi which is free it costs you nothing to go (laughs) check out minus an hour and a half to go check out lovely dark and deep um but yeah i'm gonna go mid and, and say five i'm gonna go with maddie tubi was an interesting choice for this to drop on just btw because I won't. always think of, of Tubi as, like, where shit goes to die. And so to, like, <laughs> have your movie go, like, directly to Tubi, it's, like, that's a, it's an interesting choice. I think putting it on a free platform is kind of nice because it gives people the opportunity to watch it. Mm-hmm. But it comes across as very, like, very low-budget indie horror. But I, f- I feel like Tubi is trying to almost rebrand themselves from because yeah i agree with you that's where movies go to die but they're trying to rebrand themselves in hey we have movies here too come and watch them and especially since this is a first time feature director why not throw this one out there and at least get your name recognized a little bit yeah i i have a friend that um his film hit every festival every major festival here and um got distribution but he's he landed on tubi as a tubi original um but i've seen other films land on tubi and get picked up by a shutter or uh, a screen box and that's just kind of where they started until somebody else came and, and swooped them up so um and lovely dark and deep i think was also a rental on amazon prime so it's on other platforms as well sure but if you go through the list on tubi now it may have had that that where you go to die kind of thing for a while there, but there's some good movies on Tubi. There's some good movies there. So yeah, like uh, they're definitely making you know a comeback for sure. But um, but yeah, it's they're still kind of like pulling themselves out of that. I mean, that's where I watched Velocipaster <laughs> and anything that had Velocipaster on it. I'm going to call it kind of a second tier thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Well, um, anything else we're, we're wanting to share? We're kind of just jumping back into the podcasting again. We took a really long break. I feel like a little um, bit, but 
uh, we're, we're, we're coming back and we'll have episode. We'll something. We'll try to see if we can find something special for episode 100. Uh, but if nobody, nobody's got anything else, then uh, for myself and Maddie and Greg and Patrick, we will see you next time. Peace out, Boy Scout. What about the Girl Scouts? Jesus Christ, Greg. Just saying. And Girl Scouts and any other scout that's out there. <laughs> if you're a scout, whatever. <laughs> Peace out, all scouts.